welcome to this very special webinar. My name is Laura McCone and I'm one of the lead organisers here at the New South Wales Nurses and Midwives Association. Firstly, I want to acknowledge that I come to you today from Thurrawal land and I acknowledge the elders of the past, the present and those emerging. I also want to acknowledge any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people joining us today. Today's webinar is about an issue that we at the Association have been fighting for the last few weeks. That issue is a wage freeze for all public sector workers in New South Wales. This was confirmed yesterday by the New South Wales State Premier and the Treasurer. They also confirmed that this will hit the nurses and midwives who work in the public health system. So we are fighting back against this decision. It is cruel and it is just unfair. You, the nurses and midwives on the front line of COVID, deserve recognition, not attempts by the government to send wages backwards. With this webinar, we want to provide you with the tools that will help you to have conversations with your colleagues back in the workplace, because this wage freeze is quite simply a bad idea. So before we kick off with our panellists, just some housekeeping for you all. Because this is a webinar format, you're only going to be able, able to see the person who is speaking. You won't see all of the participants, but let me assure you, there are a lot of you. So if you wish to ask a question of any of the panellists, please click on the Q&A button and type in your question. But just note that because there are so many of you on here today, we may not be able to answer all live. So if this is the case, we will have an association organiser contact you over the next few days. Also, and probably most importantly, if you're not a member of ours yet, please join. We need as many voices as possible joining in on this fight. We have some really exciting activities coming up on June the 2nd that we would love for you to join in. Okay, so before I introduce the panel, we have a quick video to bring you up to speed with our battle so far. While we rely on them all daily, the Berejiklian government is weighing up the cost of COVID-19 and Cabinet is examining the wages policy which governs the state's 400,000 public servants. The Premier is defending her government's decision to give huge pay rises to senior public servants while frontline workers like nurses and teachers face freezes to their salaries. Simon Draper from Infrastructure is a big winner with a pay rise of $66,000. The bosses of Health, Communities and Justice and Transport, nearly 30 grand each. There are modest rises for the heads of Education and Treasury and all seven are now making $599,000 a year. Those decisions were taken last year plus we have fewer secretaries in that position. So overall, we've saved dollars. The largest pay rise is $4,000 more than the entire base salary a registered nurse can expect to earn in their first year of work. And with nurses doing a lot of the heavy lifting right now, this sours even further the prospect of their wages might be frozen. It's important that um, we see our members receive the modest 2.5 per cent. To defend the pay rises of senior fat cats while cutting the wages of public sector employees is just not on. Treasurer, 82 frontline New South Wales health workers have contracted COVID-19 during this pandemic. Today, on International Nurses Day, will you rule out freezing their pay? I say that any decision that the New South Wales government makes um, over the course of this period of time, we focused uh, on two things, predominantly, Mr Speaker, keeping people in jobs uh, and keeping businesses uh, in business. Um, and I want to state um, that uh, despite uh, media reports, Mr Speaker, there has been uh, no decision uh, has been made in relation uh, to our wages policy here in New South Wales. I want to extend our deepest gratitude um, to all of our nurses. But gratitude doesn't pay the bills. Unions worry the state government is about to freeze the annual 2.5 per cent pay rise given to public servants. They get this slap in the face. Um, it's not a very big incentive to keep going to work. The Premier confirming the public wages policy is being looked at. As soon as our Cabinet makes a decision on that, obviously we'll, we'll disclose that and make that public. OK, so today we have three speakers for you. And our first speaker is Phil Nihay. Phil is the current Gen Sec of the Irish Nurses and Midwives Organisation. 
She has worked as a general and intensive care nurse since 88 in Ireland, the UK, the USA and Australia. In 1998, she joined the staff of the Irish Nurses and Midwives Organisation before rising through the ranks and being appointed as the GenSec in 2017. As many of you may or may not know, Ireland went through aggressive austerity measures from 2009 to 2014 after the GFC. Phil will talk about the experiences of Irish nurses and midwives during this time. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today, Phil, and over to you. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to join you. Um, this is a very important topic and it is one that I think we have had first-hand experience of, unfortunately, and with um, government now in Ireland, again, um, making noises about public sector pay, which is the only pay role they have direct control over, I think we may be in a, in a similar situation to what you're facing and hopefully we won't. So if I could just describe, we have at the moment in the public sector in Ireland, we have just under 39,000 full-time equivalent nurses and midwives working. We represent them, we're the largest trade union. In 2010, um, we had a massive um, economic crisis and the government's response, initial response was to nationalize all debt. And that meant that public sector wages were directly uh, affected. So the, the pay freeze very quickly metamorphosed into a pay cut and um, a very severe pay cut for nurses. Our graduate nurses, had um, a lower salary um, in any event. Their pay was when they were in their final year. It still is when they're in their final year, when they're in fourth year. They spend 36 weeks on the wards as interns and they're paid and they're contracted for that period and they get 80%. At that time, we had negotiated 80% of the staff nurse rate. That was cut to 50% and on graduation, they were uh, reduced to 80% of the qualified staff nurses rate. So that was the first direct cut to wages. All public servants had a 10% pay cut. Sick leave that we had negotiated uh, over many years through collective bargaining was changed. And the um, regime we had was that if you were on sick leave, you had six months full pay, six months half pay over a four year rolling period that was cut in half, uh, except for critical illnesses, which had a tight criteria. Uh, pension, a pension levy was introduced uh, to public servants who were in receipt of a pension, and um, that cut net pay and uh, cost 6.5% uh, on average. It was, it was graduated across the scale. So much of the income of public servants was reduced by in and around, on average per person, between 10 and 12%. But for nurses on a low wage, it was much more severe. Their take home pay was directly affected. Their premium pay and allowances, a lot of our structure of pay is based on allowances and also on premiums. Our main aim was to protect premium pay. We had a big battle on our hands. There was many attempts to cut premiums. We have a premium for working night duty, a premium for working Sundays, double time for Sunday, time and a quarter for nights, and there was major attempts to reduce those. And we succeeded in maintaining allowances. We maintained our allowances for qualification and also for location in areas that are not as attractive to work in and traditionally are difficult to recruit into. Long story short, we are now reaching the end of those austerity measures through collective agreements at national level. The pay cuts will be fully restored this October. There's a final 2% due to all public sector workers. And um, the government last week, we don't, we don't have a government at the moment. We have, um, uh, uh, we've just had a general election and our parties, our political parties are in government formation talks. The parties uh, involved in that have guaranteed that they will not, not uphold the final 2% pay restoration. But let's see, it's due in October. What did we do and what were the effects, which is the topic that you want to discuss? The main effects were that our staffing levels crashed. We had, um, before austerity, 39,000 nurses and midwives working. That went to 34,000. 
our ward care was really compromised. Community care was really compromised. Care of the older person services, the skill mix really was weighted in favor of the non-nurse at that point, because you just simply couldn't recruit. We had a real huge problem with immigration. Um, many of our new graduates, and we encouraged them not to take up the 80% lower salary, and they immigrated en masse. The classes of 2011 and 2012 graduates, they immigrated. Many of them are probably in Australia at the moment. Um, then we had uh, huge issues around uh, bullying in the workplace increased significantly during this time. We carried out two studies and um, two of our universities assisted us and we compared uh, the, the period of 2010 to 2014 and the increase in bullying in the workplace uh, within the profession increased dramatically, largely connected with poor staffing levels, really pressurized workplaces, and um, obviously the working hours during this time were also increased. We had negotiated uh, a 37.5 hour week for nurses and during, as part of the austerity measures, the working hours were increased to 39. And that just was really, really unpopular, still is unpopular amongst our members. So all of this culminated in um, public service negotiations for wages was maintained despite the austerity. We had a, a public service wage mechanism and a collective bargaining at national level for public and private. The private sector wage setting mechanism was a casualty of the austerity, but public service wage setting collective bargaining was maintained, but it was about minimizing the um, effects of austerity and negotiating cuts in a manner that were least offensive. That did not suit nurses and um, increased working hours, reduced wages and um, poorer conditions of employment, poorer staffing levels were the result. So if I could bring you one message, it is that that's really bad for patient care. The, the, the length of stay in hospitals increased. Our trolley counts, we count trolleys. Uh, I don't know what, what your term is, probably boarding on, on emergency departments increased significantly and to the point that we had just over a hundred thousand people last year boarded on trolleys. So investment in the health service in general reduced, um, bed capacity reduced, length of stay increased and nurses lives became very very difficult. Um, in midwifery the ratio of midwife to um, birth increased uh, again due to staffing levels. The safe level is 1 to 29.5. Here in and around 1 to 40 in many instances, a number of horrible situations of maternal deaths, lots of inquiries, lots of um, inquiries under our trust and care uh, as to um, omissions of care, etc. So pretty bleak years. Um, the message I would bring is you have to oppose a pay freeze. It is the first step in pay cuts and you have to get behind your union. You have to be organized. And what we did was we broke from um, our colleague public sector unions. We maintained our connection with our colleagues in the Irish Congress of Trade Unions, but we took industrial action in the beginning of 1999 and we sought proper wages for nurses and a look at the job they do and a measurement of that, which um, would ensure recruitment and retention was focused on, and that was our campaign. Recruitment and retention needs better wages for nurses because there is a global shortage. There is, the, these are global uh, skills that you hold and you are employable anywhere in the world and the competition is quite high for your skills. And if your own country doesn't value you, well then, um, immigration is going to be the next step. I don't know what your situation is um, in respect of wages, but our wages were very uncompetitive to our nearest neighbour, which is the UK. And we had a lot of aggressive recruitment from the UK because they have reduced their training in um, undergraduate nursing. So our graduates were very attractive. So that's where we were. We had a strike and uh, in January and February 1999, and through that, we have increased the wages of nurses. We have created a new salary scale. 
we have um, um, a, a, an examination of nurse manager's salary scales, which was due to commence this month. Uh, the government gleefully have, uh, because of COVID-19 restrictions, said that that uh, can't commence. And we're at the moment, we're in the middle of our discussions on why it should. And that is the next step. 2% is due for the final restoration of all of the cuts. That's between 2008 and 2020. So it's a long time to get back to where you started. And our population has increased. Our elderly population has increased. Our workloads have become heavier. And we now have a staffing ratio, which is 1,000 less than the total employment that was in place in 2007 before the austerity measures were introduced. So fewer nurses, bigger workloads, and uh, every gain we have had during that period has been because we have absolutely had to fight with uh, everything we had and our members were fully behind us. So it's, it is um, um, making your case in a manner that ties you with patient care, patient outcomes, and why cutting nurses' salaries, freezing nursing salaries, is really bad for patients. I hope that covers it. I'm happy to take any type of questions. Thanks for that, Phil. That's, uh, it's really opened my eyes to, as to why austerity measures just don't work and the horrible impact that they can have on frontline workers. I just, I don't think the nurse on the floor really thinks about the impact it would have on patient care. Like, I think that's the real kick up. So thank you.